tell us a little bit about where you see that that trajectory going, you know, in, into to the contemporary time. Yeah. So, um, and of course, um, you know, I, I have to say, uh, Eliot's poem is not fundamentally a poem about anthropogenic um, climate change. It's not, even although Eliot is, of course, very much aware that the fog is a, a creation of you know coal smoke and, and, and coal burning fossil fuel emissions and so forth. Uh, he's very much aware that the river is being polluted. He's aware of you know the, these emissions, as it were, from uh, these the living dead who are crossing uh, London Bridge, um, uh, and of course uh, uh, you know various other ways in which humans are affect, affecting the health of the planet, but. Um, even though he's not, that's not fundamentally what the poem is about, I think later poets like Simon Arbitage, uh, Patience Akbabi, um, uh, um, you know, a host of other contemporary poets, um, uh, you know, I, I think of people like Julian Aspar in the US as well, um, who echo the wasteland, whether or not they share Eliot's outlook on uh, certain other matters, um, because he gives them valuable equipment for thinking about how do we grapple with, um, you know, um, a Powell would be another example, how do we grapple with this sense that the world is turning into a wasteland in certain ways. Um, and um, so I, I think of Eliot's, um, uh, you know, doing valuable things like uh, coming up with a framework that can be large enough to encompass something as large as global and planetary conditions that are currently facing us um, as we look toward our possible destruction and even extinction. Um, and um, that's part of the reason, anyway, that the poem seems still valuable and important for us today.